Hi, this is a quick video of making hair strands for a character. In this video I've created a mesh of a hair plane and rigged it to a small chain of bones. Then I basically name everything so that the hair plane and the bones correspond. And it's quite easy to make a copy of each hair strand and the bones just by selecting them and moving them by holding shift and make sure you move them with world space. Once you've made the copy, it's just a case of selecting the root bone and rotating and moving it into place, as you can see here. And then you can rotate and move each child bone until you get the hair where you want it. Uh, for the first set of hairs, I've tried to match the head shape pretty close, but also keeping a little bit of volume for the hair. And you can see I'm um, making sure not to intersect too much with the neighbouring hair planes to avoid any high contrast defects so I'm positioning the hair near the hairline which I've drawn in roughly into the texture You can see I can also scale bones and it gives me a little change in the shape of the hair plane. I can move bones, scale bones and rotate them, giving me full control of the hairs. For each hair plane, um, the, the root area has a little bit more geometry because is subject to more bending than the rest of it. So you'll see there's much more of an angle at the top. So it does need more geometry to cope with that. Now at this point I'm not really using much reference, um, I'm just getting used to using the system. I tried a few different approaches such as uh, using world space path deform where you use a spline but I found the rotational and twist controls tend to deform the upper half of the hair meaning more time spent fixing uh, unwanted movement. Here I've just made a copy of the hair plane and renamed it and realigned the UVs to the second uh, hair strand patch and now I'm finding reference. <clears throat> so just rotated, uh, I've just flipped the image to match what I'm trying to create and taking some notes of the flow, volumes, and any other details I can analyze. And here's some flyaway hairs. I'll just write some notes here. Okay, so carry on with the second strand, which is very similar to the first set, although the strands have a few more gaps And now I'm not too happy with the the hairline and the texture, so I'm just gonna just create a little bit a bit more visibility for that. And I'm just drawing in a pink line and blurring it a little bit. Okay, so it's good enough just to help me see the line a bit better and I can make some adjustments now.
So this video is sped up six times and I think the duration of this video is around 10 minutes. So this is basically previewing about an hour's work with uh, much more to go. So just now I'm keeping the hairs flowing with each other but as I get further out the hairs will begin to uh, lose the ability to flow with itself as it becomes freer and more exposed to wind and movement but I'm just focused on getting the base volume here and a few little deviations from um, the neighbouring hair and the shape of the head. So you can see using bones it makes it very easy to get a perfect shape without, without worry. You can twist any part of the chain and it will distort just as you expect it. You could if you want also add a turbo smooth modifier at the top of the stack after the bones and you'll get some extra smoothing but just be wary that the shape may change when you do this and you could have some unwanted intersections so for this uh, workflow I'm going to avoid using Turbo Smooth. You can see the extra cuts in the polygons, uh, the extra polygons near the top of the, the hair card, and that copes with the extra bending. I'm just making the hair strands a little thinner so that um, it just looks less um, less repetitive I guess as I go further out of the head I'll make more sparse strands and cover up the gaps also any gaps seen from the front and the back or either side it's important to cover up with thinner hairs. To make the hairs, I've created my own algorithm using Game Maker, believe it or not. And it's just a little line generator that straggles and waves a little bit. And you can set the number of hairs and how many uh, bunches you want it to create. Uh, it will also create the opacity map, uh, a depth map, and a normal map from that. Um, once I'm quite happy with this workflow, I will likely release a, an extensive video and access to the hair maker, the strand maker, and also supply a little setup here. You can see I'm trying to move the hairs, but I had. Um, normal space I think uh, local the local access space and when you try and make a copy of the hair strand and the mesh uh, and the bones with local space on uh, it moves out of place so it's important to have it set to world space uh, I often use shortcut keys for world space, screen space and local space. Uh, I set them to a few keys on the keyboard next to each other so it means my workflow is fairly fast for deciding how to move things. So you'll see me switching from screen space to local space quite often for either movement or rotation. Now here you can see the bones have got a little bit distorted because I've been scaling some of the upper bones and rotating them. Um, it's no big deal. Now I'm just finding a little bit extra reference for the back. 
and a little trick I like to do is to use oil paint on the image just to help sharpen up a little bit especially if there's some JPEG type loss in the reference image and here I've just made a fourth set and I'm renaming the set to set D so I've got A, B, C, D and I'm just making sure my numbers are correct this way I can Put each set into its own layer and toggle them later. <clears throat> so I'm using a more sparse strand set to help cover up any gaps or sides that are open. Um, also I'll be trying to cover up some of the obvious stepping between those hair sets uh, eventually to make a uniform type layout now it's important to know that the hair will overlap the base in most cases but the opposite could also be true that some larger hairs are overlapping shorter hairs when the hair gets moved so it's okay to have some bits overlapping and underlapping as long as it, it does look pretty at the end of the day and try as much as possible to avoid those um, intersections it, it creates a, an art of the red channel works on variation for the strands uh, the green channel is the root and the blue channel is the tip. Uh, this is why you see this kind of funky coloured hair strands with this where it's more yellow with the root there that will be the green channel working and where it's more blue at the tip that's the blue channel. The red channel is uh, tonal variation And uh, the whole system ties in with a shader that I've created for uh, currently Unity Asset Store, but I'll also be working on remaking the shader for Unreal Engine. Uh, and I'll also be selling some wigs that uh, will be created using this method. So you can see. I'm starting to lay the hair up quite a bit and although it looks messy here it can be fixed later with some soft selection which will uh, for the most part keep the hairs roughly um, in proximation to each other so it should be easy enough to make um, any changes in volume and shape depending on your character's head you can take the mesh of the hair into uh, Maya or Max or uh, whatever you use and manipulate those wigs and all the strands to suit your head of your character. You can see I'm starting to scale the bones down towards the tip just to get a little bit of uh, Kind of fall off 